Hello everyone, welcome to Sunpay again. In this video, we are going to predict and analyze the Indian air quality based on machine learning. So to do so, we have imported all the necessary libraries that we need. Then we have imported the data set we have. We have found the data set on Kaggle named as Indian air quality data. So to understand the data properly, we have checked uh, the first five rows of the data using the function uh, df.head and then we have uh, used df.tail function to check out the last five rows of the data then we have checked the shape of the data as you can see that we have 13 columns in our data set and uh, our data set is pretty big we have around 43 thousands, uh, thousands of rows in our data set so after that we check all the basic information we have got in our data set using df.info function as you can see we have different types of data type in our data set like object float etc and then we check how many null values we have present in our data set as you can see we have uh, a lot of missing values in our data set we have used uh, isnull.sum function to check out the missing values in our data set so to perform machine learning we must handle uh, we must take care of the missing values uh, after taking care of the missing values then we can um, perform machine learning and we can build our efficient uh, model for our program for our data set after that we get the statistical overview of our data set using the df.describe function and as you can see we have all the numerical values here this numerical uh, columns are nothing but the uh, pollutant present in our data set and also we can check out the mean standard deviation minimum and maximum numbers of all these pollutants in our data set and so we get a pretty good statistical overview of the data then we check out all the unique values present in our data frame after that we check out the columns uh, in our data set uh, as we have known earlier that we have 13 different column in our data set now it's time to visualize that the data to understand the data properly uh, we need to visualize the data so we start our visualization using a pair plot and this is how our pair plot looks like and this pair plot is nothing but a scatter plot actually uh, if we check the x-axis here we can see we have all the numerical columns present in our data set and we have also the same columns in the y-axis so what's going on actually here it's taking a column in the x-axis and comparing uh, with the other columns in the y-axis and then it's giving a scatter plot and so if we take sulfur dioxide in the x-axis and uh, pm 2.5 in the y-axis then this is how our scatter plot looks like so in this entire uh, pair plot we are doing the same thing so after that we do the value counts for all the states we have and after that we plot the value counts data as we can see we have uh, created a histogram over here uh, and this histogram shows that um, the states present in our data set we have used a uh, plot.figure function and then we have used the histogram dot histogram uh, function to get this uh, pretty nice histogram and after that we're doing the same thing for our type column and this is how our histogram looks like and we do the same thing for agency we are counting the agency column and the same thing for uh, then we have uh, created the histogram for agency as well and now we are uh, going to uh, check out that which uh, state has the highest number of sulfur dioxide present uh, in the air 
uh, so for to do that we have created a bar plot here, sns bar plot uh, so in the x axis we are giving state and in the y axis we are uh, giving sulfur dioxide and then we plot it and so as we can see that we have the highest number of sulfur dioxide present in the Uttaranjal and over here we have done the same uh, graph again but this time we have sorted it we have sorted the values and so easily we can see now that we have highest number of sulfur dioxide present in Uttaranjal and the lowest number of in Nagaland and now we do the same bar plot uh, for nitrogen dioxide and it shows that West Bengal has the highest number of nitrogen dioxide present in the air and um, Arunanchal Pradesh has the lowest number of uh, nitrogen dioxide present in the air. Now we check out uh, the RSPM, uh, higher level of RSPM present in the uh, air. We have for all this um, graph we have used the same thing we have uh, created uh, we have created uh, the visualization using all the same functions like we have used uh, plt dot figure and then we have given the same plot uh, figure size and we have also given x uh, x sticks and rotation 90 what it is doing actually as we are giving x sticks it's uh, giving the name of uh, all the um, state we have and it's rotating at the 90 degree angle so that we get a pretty good visualization so this state name is uh, rotated at uh, 90 degree and after that we have uh, done same thing for rspm and uh, over here we have uh, as we can see here that delhi has the highest number of rspm in the air and uh, for SPM it's the same Delhi is on the top again Delhi has the highest number of uh, uh, SPM in the area and if we check the PM2 as we uh, PM2.5 as we have uh, known earlier that PM2 uh, in the PM2.5 column there are lots of missing values in the in that column so our visualization is not that great over here most of um, most of the state doesn't have pm 2.5 in their in their air so but still we can see that delhi has the highest number of uh, pm 2.5 in their air now we take care of all the missing values uh, that is present in our data set and uh, in this null values variable we are storing all the null values we have in a sorting order using is null dot sum function and we are sorting it sorting the values and uh, then we check the null values um, variable and as we can see we have lots of missing values in our data set and now we check uh, the um, overall percent of the uh, column wise percent of the missing values like in which column has the highest percent of uh, of missing values present and then as we can see that we have uh, almost 98 percent of missing values in pm 2.5 column and we have over 50 percent in spm and we have 30 over 30 percent is in agency and over 30 percent in stn as well so you have to take care of all these missing values before we start uh, performing machine learning on our data set and so to do that as we have already checked that we have lots of unnecessary columns in our data set like uh, isn't cst and code uh, these unnecessary columns are not affecting our uh, our target column actually that's why we are removing uh, we are dropping all these unnecessary columns using df.drop function data frame dot drop function uh, helping us to drop all the unnecessary columns and we are uh, doing in place uh, is true 
that means we are dropping all the columns uh, from uh, dropping all these columns from the original data set and now we check out data set and uh, null values uh, as we can see we ha still have null values but we have less null values right now so after that uh, it's time to impute all the categorical data to impute the categorical data uh, we are uh, filling the location uh, using zero and we are filling type uh, with zero as well and uh, we are also we are also replacing uh, all the null values with zero uh, in the numerical data as well and now we check the missing values in our data set using is null.sum function again and now as you can see that we don't have any missing values in our data set it's all zero that means we don't have any missing values in the data set we have successfully imputed uh, the missing values 